Hi Capricorn, welcome to Terribly Accurate. This is your tarot reading, um, your general reading for October 17th through November 17th. And so this is for anyone who's a Capricorn sun, moon sign, or rising sign. Now, um, first thing, remember this is a general reading, okay? So some things are gonna resonate, some things are not. Um, the things that resonate for you right away, stay focused on those, but then other things you might want to look at your rising sign or your moon sign. Another thing is that sometimes, because it's for a whole month long, there might be things that don't make sense right now when this video first comes out and you watch it, but then if you go back and you watch it again in a week or two, do you see that little angel float by? That's kind of cool. Um, so maybe some angel messages in this reading. Um, there will be things that make sense then at that point in time because from the time that I read the cards until that point they hadn't yet happened so they couldn't resonate yet okay now it could also be maybe I'm not the reader for you if we don't click that's okay there's tons of really good readers on YouTube but if we do please like the video share them with your friends um, subscribe to them so that you know when they come out and because um, that's the whole point of doing these readings is to give you kind of a picture of what will be occurring, what your challenges will be this month, and then how to best handle those challenges so that you can make the best decisions and be on the best path towards your own happiness and enlightenment and fulfillment, okay? So, we'll just go ahead and get started. This month, we are going to do a general overarching theme card for your reading, and then we'll get into areas of family, your home life, your friendships, your health, your work, your money, um, and then love life if you're single and if you're coupled. So Capricorns, what do we have for you? This month is your, over, um, it's your overall theme or point of focus. We've got the card that says fear here. It says, I realize that I'm testing my resolve to live in the energy of love. So we definitely do need to make sure that um, we are love focused. And I don't mean like romantic relationships. I mean that we're always coming from a place of love when we communicate with others. That everything we do, we're doing it because we love it. Does that make sense? Um, so, that being said, we're going to just get started right away with your family life. Two of Swords in Reverse. So there may have been a decision that you have to make in regards to um, your family, and it's probably a decision about communicating, about talking to them, about something, bringing something up, a thought. Um, but anyway, it's that you've made up your mind, but you haven't quite followed it through. So you know what you're going to do, but you haven't done it yet. We've got the Four of Cups right next to it saying that you, it's almost like there's hesitancy because you're waiting to see if opportunities present themselves, if other opportunities come along that can um, maybe sway you from the decision that you've made. You have a challenge card here, which is the Hierophant. And um, it's challenging to make this decision, no matter what it is, because it's going to be different for everybody. It's a general reading, but it's challenging to make it just because you're being pulled between... Um, the two options here are doing things like as expected, as your family would expect you to, tradition, um, and then kind of trying a new way and seeing if that works better. And so you're kind of just waiting to see if something else comes along, like a different opportunity, like a window that makes it super clear. And so what this one's saying is, I don't think that's going to happen. It's more that you just have to take the initiative and just pull the band-aid and you know make your choice just just say what you need to say communicate what you need to communicate you're gonna feel better for um, just doing it at this point in time okay because the waiting is hard what's going on in regards to your home life now this could be your actual physical home or um, the people and pets and stuff within it we've got the world everything's totally fine <laughs> This month, you can expect very little drama. Everything's working out the way it's supposed to. Like, with, And I feel like also this is going to be for most of you, like your actual physical home space. Like your dishwasher is not going to break. Like um, the furnace isn't going to go out. Things like that. And those are also things that we need to express gratitude for. Like if you keep a gratitude journal, just be like, hey, I'm 
thank you that my appliances work, thank you that the electricity turns on, that kind of a thing. Um, it says that things aren't always fair, right? But like actual physical things within your home, I think are going to be just fine. It's more concepts and um, that indecision or it's less indecision. It's more you've made decisions but haven't carried them through like in regards to your family. So anything that's not feeling right in the home is because of that issue that I had mentioned. Now, some of you don't live with your family. So you're like, why does that make sense? Like in my home life. Well, because you're walking around with this energy in your home, dumping it places, right? Okay. What's going on in regards to your friendships? The three of wands in reverse. So this one is saying that um, right now, your friends um, are not people that you have to really um, go out of your way to invest in and things like that. Like, they're just there for you. They're really good people because you've done that in the past. They'll be there for you if you need them. We have the Three of Cups. So it's saying it's a really great month to spend time with them that is light, that's fun. Go out, drink, party a little bit. It's totally okay this month. You're surrounded by good people. Um, that'll bring you a lot of happiness and stability. It'll make you feel um, a lot of joy and bliss. I do really see this month as a positive month for a lot of signs in regards to friendships. And you especially are one of them. I think Taurus was one too. You, you might not be feeling up to it, but it's saying you'll be glad you did in retrospect. So for example, on a Saturday night, one of your friends says, hey, let's go out, let's live it up. And you're like, oh my gosh, this work was so tiring. I just want to lay home and watch Netflix. Like just got done with my work week. It was horrible. Um, you, you might really have to just like drag yourself by the hair out the door to get there. But once you're out, once you come home, you know, early Sunday morning, you're going to be glad that you did. Um, and so, you know, this is living in that energy of love, showing love to your friends by doing that, but also showing love to yourself. Like, so that can be taken two different ways, like showing love to yourself by taking the time to rest if you need it, but also showing love to yourself by like rewarding yourself, by having fun with your friends. Now, if you don't have any friends or if you have very few friends, is it a good month to make new ones? Um, that's going to be dependent upon the way that you're framing your thoughts is what that's saying. So if you want to go out and make new friends, absolutely you can, but it, it's like that co-creation thing. You have to actually go be places. Does that make sense? You can't just try to manifest friends while you're sitting at home. Um, it's saying that in regards to your friendships, there's nothing really, like you don't have people around you who are deceiving you. You don't have people out there that are malicious and trying to use you. So like any new friends coming into your life this month are likely to be really good ones. Um, what's going on in regards to your health? The King of Cups in reverse. So you might not be feeling particularly awesome about your health this month. And feeling kind of, I don't want to say that you're depressed, right? But when you have like negative feelings attached to your health, then it's hard to improve your health. Um, it's that for some of you, your long-term goals in regards to money and career and family, that sort of thing are very much a distraction from taking care of yourself the way that you would like to, okay? Um, so there's a lot of confusion about what is the best way. So you might be thinking, okay, maybe I can implement um, yoga into my life 30 minutes, you know, twice a week. Um, just watch a video on YouTube or something. Or maybe I could join a gym. Or maybe I could replace one of my meals with a salad. It's like there's so many options that you get confused and overwhelmed by it. Like you don't know where to start. So let's see if we can figure out where to start. Like what should we focus on? Um, nourishing whatever makes you happy. Now, 
this is going to sound really weird, but so maybe it's for one specific person. But if you were thinking about like trying to eat more fish, that's good. Or taking fish oil, that's good. I would recommend that. That would be like a good little start. Um, but for the rest of you, it's like what kind of stuff could you do that would make you feel serene, that would make you feel very calm, um, that it's not too hard. Because if you're going to overexert yourself, like jump right into like some sort of boot camp thing, this month you're not going to feel real good about it. You're going to feel imbalanced. If it's something you're already doing, go ahead and keep doing it. But I'm talking about those of you who are trying to um, bring new things into your life. Now, this could also be like for your health you would be really well served to do something very relaxing that is passive, like a getting massage, okay? Something like that, that it moves um, your lymph tissue around, you know, clears you of some infection, um, re relaxes your body, decreases your stress, increases um, your serotonin levels, so it raises your mood, that sort of a thing. That's what this is about because we do have some... Um, we do have some fear and stress in our life, and I think that's what's causing a lot of the issues that could be associated to our health. So um, it could just help us to feel more loving. And we're showing ourselves love by getting massages, by spo spoiling ourselves, stuff like that. Does that make sense? It doesn't have to be a massage, but anything along, um, anything that is stress relieving. So that could be meditation. It could be a Reiki healing, anything like that. Uh, what's going on in regards to your work life? And this is Capricorn Sun, Moon, or Rising. The Queen of Cups in reverse. And the King of Pentacles. So some of you might be in a job where you are making a good amount of money, you're feeling really stable, but the love for it has gone. So what is it that you should do about this? Talk, to, talk about it. You need to talk to your employer about it. If you're your own boss, you should maybe talk to somebody else about it and try to figure this out because there is a workable solution. There's a way to infuse more love into what you're doing. Or if you love what you're doing and you're um, thinking about leaving because you need more money, you could talk about this and hopefully negotiate a pay raise. Does that make sense? What else? Now, for some of you within the workplace um, that are feeling emotionally disconnected, it's because it's the wrong path for you, right? And you know that. You know that. Um, there very much could be some disconnection and disagreement with the people that you work with that um, are just the kind of things that are not going to change no matter what. Like, you can put all of this effort into trying to get along but you're just very different people. And it, it's probably not even personal. It's just like different work styles. Like you want to do something one way, they want to do something the other way, and there's no middle ground, you know? And that's not going to change. It's going to be a consistent issue as time passes. So it's something to think about. Um, if you're in that position, should you look elsewhere? It says that maybe there's too many options right now. You have too many options, <laughs> like... With everything, it seems like. It's like you're just overwhelmed because possibilities are limitless. Opportunities are everywhere. So it's a good problem to have. It's just about trying to emotionally figure out where you're at and what's most important to you so that you can move that way. Now, as a Capricorn, you might be thinking more logically than emotionally, right? And so your feelings on things are kind of like battling with your brain on what is the right path. Um, what's going on in regards to your money this month? Um, again, this is going to sound very strange, but like maybe the emotions you have towards your finances are not super positive, and with the law of attraction, that could be causing. I don't feel like you have like an issue, you know, but it's more like little hiccups, like. And, like, maybe your checkbook isn't balanced correctly. There's an error there. Something like that. Um, 
And the flow of money might be slowing down a little bit. You might be bringing in a little bit less or putting out a little bit more than typical this month than what you would usually have. And um, that's because of that law of attraction and that blockage there. Because when you come from a place when you're like um, coming from lack, when you say, oh my gosh, I don't have enough money to ABC. Or you say, I'm afraid, I have fear that I won't have enough money, then then you're attracting that to be the reality. So you're creating like a negative relationship with money. So what you need to do instead is um, affirm to yourself, I have enough. The universe will provide me what I need. I'll be able to pay these things. And just stop worrying about it. <laughs> Every time that you hand somebody money or pay a bill, feel like joy in your heart, like, I'm so fortunate that I can do this. And then you'll be attracting more of that to yourself. Does that make sense? Um, you might want to watch some videos on Law of Attraction and how that works. I know it sounds like um, psycho mumbo jumbo stuff. And to be honest, when I was in college and I took a bunch of psychology courses, I really was like cognitive behavioral therapy is some bullshit, right? Like the reframing your thoughts. Um, but it... It's actually true. <laughs> it actually works. There's a reason they write books on it, right? The Secret was a bestseller. I didn't read it, but probably because I was busy being stubborn, not believing in it, but I do now. So anyway, I'm just saying try it. Try it and you'll see. Okay. What's going on in your love life? Holy schmoly. Apparently lots. <laughs> Cards are jumping all over the place. What's going on for single Capricorn, Sun, Moon, and Rising, October 17th through November 17th in your love life? First thing, Ace of Swords. Okay, so this is really cool because this is the potential for a new relationship to start, one that is very honest, one that has really good communication. Um, this is also like being very clear on what it is that you want as well. What else do we have? Lovers. Oh, good. So this kind of person that you would meet or start a relationship with, it might be somebody that you already know, and then you're just coming now to talk about it, say, hey, do you want to give this a try? Really awesome, awesome um, passion, connection, like, um, in the physical world, though, like sex drive, like a lot here for you if you're single this month. What else could possibly be happening for Capricorn singles? The Seven of Swords in reverse. So even if you're not feeling um, deep emotional attachment to this person or to any of the people that you're dating this month, it they're not the kind of people you're going to walk away from yet. And that's because, like, even logically, it doesn't make sense yet, especially when the sex is so good. Um, now, you may have some hesitation or some doubts, though, about this person as a long-term partner because they might not have all of their shit together yet. And so... Um, it's not something that you need to call them out on, but it's just something that's like in the back of your mind and could be nagging you because you don't want to waste time with somebody if um, you want to be available to meet the right person. But ultimately, this is um, the kind of thing that you should stay in at least through November 17th. From October 17th to November 17th. Any person that comes in your life right now like that, do that. Be be with them, enjoy that sex, that fun. I think that they really will um, help you to feel more confident, first and foremost, which is good right now because sometimes you're having here and there a couple of negative emotions like associated to just outside circumstances in your life and your self-esteem. So this is going to help to raise that. It will help you a lot, um, especially if you're having workplace problems and that's like eating at you, it's bothering you, then it's kind of an escape outside of your workplace. So th this is really good. And it's not saying anything about the long-term potential, whether they're a keeper forever, whether they're not. Maybe it's a mixed bags for Capricorns this month. Maybe some of you are going to be with your soulmates and you know move forward, and maybe some of you... Um, this is just somebody that comes into your life, shows you a really good time, makes you feel awesome about yourself, and then you move on.
but we'll see. Anything else for single Capricorns? Um, seven of wands. So anybody that is coming into your life this month, sorry, my screen just went blank. Okay. <clears throat> so anyone coming into your life this month, um, are just kind, you know, and they do help with your self-esteem, as I was saying, because they don't attack you. Because you might be feeling kind of attacked lately, you know, that especially people in your family as well, when they're pushing you to make that decision that we talked about, it's, you just might be like a little bit overwhelmed and defeated in different areas of your life. So, so I would definitely say go ahead and engage in this. It, they're showing up in your life for a reason. Is there anything going on for coupled Capricorn, Sun, Moon, and Rising this month? What do we need to know? And we've got the Ten of Cups in reverse. So maybe your situation isn't ideal, right? It's not that your partner's not ideal, but it's that the situation just doesn't seem like your relationship. It's hard to take it to the next level, to get to that happily ever after. The circumstances um, are a little bit frustrating, and this could also be that same issue that we started with. So perhaps um, you're married and you have children and your spouse is saying, should we move over here so I can take this job? Or maybe you're saying that. You know, it's that sort of a thing where your mind's already made up, but you haven't quite executed the decision and told everyone yet. That could be causing some conflict. Um, we have the death card, though, saying that change is really good. And we don't need to live in fear, right, of change, because without change, there's not ever growth. And we don't look at endings as endings. We need to look at them as new starts, as new beginnings. So you've got to release the fear and get excited and express love and, and contentment for the things that are coming and trust that wonderful things are coming. Because as you can see with this card, you see all those pretty colors on there? And a lot of those things are, um, are growing. You know, they're flowers. They're budding. It's beautiful. So, so beautiful things are to come from this change. We've got um, a few more cards that just came out in a big lump here. And essentially the message is lack of confidence and assurity in yourself having so many options that it's confusing you emotionally. You're not quite sure what is the right thing to do. And so you're trying to hold tight to what you already know, to your possessions, to your money, to your security, to your day-to-day -day life, to your stability. You're fearing that change, and we really need you to not fear that change. That's what your angels are telling you. They're like, just trust us, please. Please trust us because we're trying to change things for the better. And change is scary. But that's what we're trying to do. We want to help you. We love you. So, um, you know, that's what this is. It says, I realize that I'm testing my resolve to live in the energy of love. So love every one. Love every difference of opinion. Um, love the changes that are coming into your life. And love the future. Like make affirmations that the future is going to be wonderful because it will be. That's what your angels are trying to say. So that was a little slightly confusing message maybe for some of you um, because you have the seven of cups over and over saying so many options. I don't know what to do. So my recommendation would be to just um, take like three deep breaths at least, however many it feels like you take until you start tingling or you feel a kind of light in your head. Um, imagine a white light like going through your body, okay? And, you know, when we started this reading, we saw that little angel there. So they're telling you very strongly, we're here for you. We love you. We care about you. But we can't help you if you don't allow us to help you. So you do that. You take those breaths and then um, just say in your mind or say out loud, please help me. Please help me to understand what the right thing to do is here. Like, what is the choice that you would like to see me make? What is in um, alignment with my highest good, right? And then pay attention throughout the day, watch for signs. Watch and see what happens. If you keep seeing like 
the same animal over and over. Look up whatever that is online, what the spiritual meaning is. Or um, if you hear a song over and over, or something just pops into your head, think about the lyrics of that. Is that a message from your angels or spirit guides, okay? So good luck, love and light. If you would like a personal reading to help you sort this stuff out, go through the pros and cons. I'm more than happy to do that. My contact information is below in the description box. And then so are the links to um, Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram, Twitter, all that stuff. But who uses Twitter? Um, <laughs> I mean, I guess maybe because I don't know how to use it really effectively. Um, and then there's also a link to Patreon, which is where you find the readings that we used to do all the time here, the Stop, Drop, and Roll readings, the um, Maslow's Pyramid readings, all those angel card readings, the special extra readings, and um, lessons on how to read tarot and make crystal grids, all sorts of stuff there. So check it out if you're interested. If not, that's okay. But love and light. See you tomorrow for your daily uh, card reading. Bye.